Hello and welcome to our Sunday Reflection. Whoever you are and however you find yourself here, whether you're a regular or have landed here by accident or have even searched us out, it's good to have you tuning in. Today we recall the events recorded in the second chapter of the Book of Acts in the New Testament of the Bible. And here Jesus and Jesus' disciples encounter the presence of God in an extraordinary way as they were praying together in a room. Firstly, I would invite you to read this story for yourself as we watch the next clip. So Pentecost, what really is it all about? It's a strange story of a house filled with the sound of a rushing wind, tongues of flames appearing on the heads of disciples, disciples speaking in languages that foreigners from all over the known world could understand. What on earth is going on here? Well, in order to get a sense of 
the reality behind it, we need to rewind the clock a little bit. During his time on earth, Jesus had always promised his disciples that after his death and resurrection, his presence, his spirit would be with them forever. And so we know about the events of Good Friday, how all that unfolded. We also know that following his death, he was raised to life, even though his disciples could not quite grasp it or at the very least took some convincing of Jesus' resurrection. And this involved Jesus having to eat some fish, having to cook breakfast for them, and then even allowing some physical contact between him and his disciples. And the nice thing is, actually, is that this is all very human, because which one of us doesn't need a little bit of convincing at times? So after his resurrection, we are told that Jesus continued to appear to his disciples for a period of about 40 days. There is no record of what was said, but it must have had a real impact on the disciples, because when he leaves his disciples and goes into heaven, Luke records that they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and stayed continually in the temple praising God. So from being a group of people who needed proof of Jesus' physical resurrection, from being a group of people who were fearful and were meeting behind locked doors, they turn into a group of people who are absolutely convinced of Jesus' continued presence with them, even though he is not physically there. The thing is that Jesus had repeatedly promised them that he would be back and that his presence would be with them forever, just as present by his spirit and even more so than when he was with them physically. And so the ascension was effectively the demonstration of what you've been talking about all the time, that you would go away, that, but, that he would come back and be with his disciples and all his followers in a way that was tangible, in a way that was real, and in a way that would last forever. And at Pentecost, as we read in the account from Acts chapter 2, Jesus' presence is poured out in a dramatic way and drives his disciples to the ends of the known world to share the good news that Jesus was alive. These people who initially were meeting behind locked doors and hiding away were now unrecognizable. God had worked a true transformation in their lives. Thing is, God has always been in the business of transformation, and God is involved in that transformation business today in the lives of individuals and in the lives of our churches. We want our lives, our churches, to be more full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We want all of that. We would love that to be so obvious in our lives and in the relationships that we have with each other as we come together to worship. And it is Jesus, through his presence, who works that transformation in our lives and in the lives of our churches. It is through the power of the Spirit, his presence, that he brings about that transformation that enables us to address situations which seem to be far beyond that which we can cope with. And this is what Jesus said about his Holy Spirit. Which of you, fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
So God delights in blessing his people, blessing you, blessing me with his Holy Spirit. But here's a mystery. Jesus also says that when we're asking God, that when we're praying to God for things, we should never give up. We should be persistent. It's not just about asking for it once and leaving it at that. It's about coming back to God time and time again, asking for his presence to fill our lives. It's not about God who is reluctant to give, but the truth is that all of us leak and we sometimes run out of that love. We sometimes run out of that joy. We need that peace. And sometimes we're in very low supply and we need God to fill us afresh with his presence. And the same applies to our church. We want more of his presence in our community. We want lives to be transformed. And so as we pray together, we should never give up, but be persistent and continually seeking God's presence through prayer. It's not that God is not generous, but perhaps in saying that we should be persistent, Jesus is actually pointing to the truth that God loves to hear from us. God loves that relationship, wants us to be in relationship, wants us to be connecting with God, wants us to be listening to him, wants us to build that connection with him. And as we do so, and as we sit and wait, and as we experience the peace which God gives us, it is then that we encounter God sometimes at the most unexpected of times. Maybe, just maybe, we need to stop, to be still, to watch and listen to what God is doing in the world and simply join in. Because you know that where God is at work, there you will encounter his presence in you and surprising ways. Let's pause now. And I would invite you to reflect on the words which are going to appear on screen in a moment. They're from a well-known hymn that is often sung around the time of Pentecost. But as you read them, Make them your prayer, the prayer between you and God.
as we have prayed for ourselves, so we pray for the needs of the world and those who are closest to us, those for whom life is difficult and challenging, those who need healing, peace and reassurance in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. To round off our time of reflection this morning, we're going to listen to a famous hymn. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. And I hope this is not just your prayer for today, but also for the weeks, the days and the months ahead. May God bless you and see you again soon.